good news about the all-new Dacia Sandero. Remember the days when James May, that was his punchline in Top Gear. Well, spring forward a few years and behind me is the Dacia Duster. Now, I have a very big spot for a Dacia Duster, but I probably need to explain why. And this video is part of my trying to bring more affordable cars to the channel. Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to the Dacia Duster. One of the hazards of doing this job over the last, I don't know, three to four years is the price of new cars is creeping up and up and up. And suddenly you hear yourself saying a phrase like, this car is only 50,000 pounds or this car is only 60,000 pounds. In fact, the recent Lotus Electra review, I got a whole bunch of grief for saying that the base Lotus Electra at 90,000 pounds was a mass market car. And of course they're not. 50 grand, 40, that's a lot of money in anyone's book. And I get so many comments about people who honestly feel like they're being priced out of the new car market. There's a whole nother conversation to be had about used cars. Clearly the second you buy a car, you get depreciation and therefore buying a car maybe a year old or two years old is a more financially astute thing to do, arguably. But brand new cars, that's one of the things I do on the channel is review brand new cars. So very recently I got approached by the guys at Dacia and they said, we know you have a soft spot for a Dacia Duster because if you follow the channel, a few years ago, I got involved with an armed forces charity called Future Terrain. And we did a range of things with their Dacia Dusters. They had four of them, two of them set up like a rally car with a full roll cage and two of them set up as an adventure vehicle with a roof rack and sand ladders and just epic, epic things. And honestly, we took them everywhere and I really, really fell for the Dacia Duster. Not a car I would have even looked at before. Not a car that was even on my radar. So Dacia said, look, why don't we send you the latest Duster? Now, interestingly, there is a brand new Duster coming later this year. This isn't it. But I thought it was still a good time to talk about this car because I think this car's really, really interesting. And let's get the good news out the way. This is the Dacia Duster Journey, the top spec duster you can buy. And this car, as spec, is £23,000 on the road. And actually, this press car has £1,000 worth of options. This urban grey paint is a £600 option, or £650, I think, actually. And this car's also got a spare wheel, which is another 300 quid. So this car actually is £22,000 on the road, and the Dacia Duster range starts at just £17,000. I know I just used the word just £17,000. That's still a huge amount of money. But if you put one of these on a PCP deal with a reasonable deposit, you can be into one of these for less than £100 a month. So... I think that this is an affordable new car. In fact, I don't think there are many cars of this size, scope and capability that you could get into for that kind of money. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, Dacia are a part of the Renault group. So really, when you look inside this car, the best way of thinking about Dacia models is they're like five-year-old Renaults, really. So all the tech that comes out of a Renault, when they get the new latest stuff in the Renault range, the previous generation of tech goes into Dacia and they can therefore make the cars more affordable. So when you look at the infotainment system, when you look at the switch gear, it's straight out of a Renault. So some people say, Dacia, who are they? What kind of brand are they? You're basically buying a Renault just with a different badge on the bonnet. I think the Duster is it's quite a cool and quirky car. It, it reminds me a little bit of the Skoda Yeti, and you know how much I love a Skoda Yeti. I love the roof rails, and I just think it's got quite a cool look to it. In terms of practicality, boot-wise, it's got a really good size boot. If you take the parcel shelf out, brilliant for shopping, for going away the weekend, drop the seats, easily get my bike in there. And the cool thing about this car being the price it is, is I just think it makes it a very usable car. And they do do a commercial version of the Duster. Now, we'll talk a bit more when we jump inside. When you start to analyze the 
quality of some of the materials used. This partial shelf is a bit weak and feeble. There's some scratchy plastics around. There's no power tailgate. But you are looking at a car that is £23,000. So you have to make compromises somewhere, but there's useful things. You've got a power socket, 12 volt power socket in the back. It's just a really usable space. Talking about space, what's the rear passenger room like? Now it's safe to say, it's not the biggest car in here. I'll tell you what you do need to do. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let's put them up like that. Otherwise they just dig into your back. So that, that's much better. So it's not, it's not too bad. They're, they're cloth seats, scratchy plastics on the doors. You've got power windows in the back. You've got two USB-C power ports there for charging your stuff in the back. You've got Isofix for your kiddie seats. It is a three, three seat car. You could get three passengers in here. I think realistically, it's probably a two person in the back job. But yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all. Front seat. Okay, up front in the driver's area. Um, I've mentioned already, I promise this is the last time I'll say scratchy plastics, but there are lots. Dash, door cards, to be expected. I don't expect, you know, Connolly leather in here or anything. These seats, I think they look quite good. What I want to try and do now is put them to the test because you might be thinking, okay, well, I'll buy a car like this and it'd be great for local runarounds and kids' runs and tip runs and taking the dogs to the walk on the beach. What's it like on a long journey? So I need to go to Manchester today. Now, from my house to Manchester is around four and a half to five hours. It's a really good long journey to stretch this car's legs. I'm going to set the trip. I've actually had the car a few days. I've done quite a few miles in it already. Uh, so I'll talk more about what it's like when you're out driving. It's got a, a little 1.3 litre petrol engine, 150 horsepower, 250 newton metres, and a six speed automatic gearbox. Um, so, you know, driving wise, driving dynamics wise, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're out and about. The only thing I'm not quite sure of whether this is lacking in spec on this car or whether it's not working or not, but if I fire the car up, the infotainment system should support smartphone pairing. And in the press pictures on the website of, of Dacia, there's pictures of Apple CarPlay running in this car. I've got my cable here, but it's just not having it at all. Um, I can't pair my phone to get Apple CarPlay. So I'm probably going to run uh, Waze on my phone and SatNav on the car in parallel, just to compare and contrast actually, might be quite interesting. So um, let's get some camera set up and get heading off to Manchester. And I'll talk more about the duster once we're out driving. Okay, we're on our way, people. So um, I've got 247 miles ahead of me in the little Dacia Duster. Um, I've got my split screen sat nav set up. I've basically got my phone running ways above and then the native sat nav below. Uh, I still can't fathom out why this isn't an Apple CarPlay, but anyway. Um, so one of the things I'm not gonna get a chance to do today, but I thought I'd actually start off by talking about it, is the off-road credentials of the Dacia Duster. They are incredible things off-road, and you might not believe me when I say this, but they are a match for pretty much anything that comes out of Land Rover, to a point. I mean, the, the really, really extreme stuff, they may well struggle with, but the moderate, they're so lightweight, uh, they've got a centre locking diff and you can really do some incredible things and when, when I was with Future Terrain that's exactly what I did. So I know most people who buy one of these aren't going to be taking them off road but you never know I think the commercial one there's an opportunity for this car to be used in the agricultural sector you could you could you could you know, they're so affordable you could use one and you know put a whole bunch of stuff in the back and and, and, and need to go, maybe not massively off-road and bouldering or anything, but farm work, green lanes, those types of things, dusters absolutely eat that stuff up for breakfast. But I'm gonna crack on a little bit. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do in the car is I've already been running this car 
for the last few days. So I've currently done about 120 miles in this car and my average MPG is 40 miles to the gallon. But that was a run over T Sussex and back when I reviewed that lovely Lotus Esprit Turbo. That didn't include a lot of kind of cruising where I might eat that MPG up a little bit. Because I reckon on a long run, I'm gonna be getting mid to high 40s. That's what that's your quote for this car. And I think that's one of the really important things. If you're gonna buy a, uh, an affordable entry level car like this, you know, the people who are buying it, who are budget conscious, will also want it to be as efficient as possible so they're not spending too much money on petrol. But I do love coming down the Petroped Hill Climb because look at that view. It's not perfect today because it's a bit cloudy, but it's still pretty stunning to be fair. So I'm gonna crack on and then I'll talk to you maybe next time I get some nice twisty bits of road. Okay, a few twisties. Now, this auto box is a little bit lazy and hunts around and takes its time working out what there we go what gear it needs to be in but I, I can't I can't gauge that against I don't know a sports car because that's just not what this is under normal average driving conditions it does a great job but if you are wanting to kind of push on down a bit of twisty road um, then the gearbox does kind of it kind of works out what it needs to be doing eventually the car's got quite a bit of roll in it and the suspension's quite softly sprung but that just means it's supple and actually soaks up bumps and makes it a relatively comfortable ride. The, the, there is a, a few rattles and a bit of crash in here, but again, it's, it's a relatively lightweight car in modern day terms anyway. And just in terms of things like the sound deadening and the materials, that one of the things that you'll find that does present a little bit more noise and there's a few more creaks and rattles, but nothing off-putting, nothing horrible. Um, the general performance on road though is is good it is really good it's it's a, a good bit of fun this engine you know you'd look at it on paper and 150 horsepower doesn't sound that much it's fine i think the 0 to 60 time is about nine and a half seconds or something not that you buy a car like this to do 0 to 60 and i think it tops out at 124 miles an hour but again it's that's not that's just not what this car is designed to be doing Road trip food. Now then. Quick M&S special. Now, important things if you're gonna use this car for a bit of a road trip. There are three drinks holders or, or drinks container holders. There's two by the handbrake. It's got a proper handbrake and one up front. All I would say is they're a weird shape. So this is kind of a fairly standard shape bottle but it doesn't fit in there and it, it moves around and it's fallen out a couple of times and then the one that's in front of the gear stick is good enough for a coffee cup like this but no good for a water bottle these things are important i guess but yeah what have i got there road trip food marks and spencer's the best ever prawn sandwich got to be done really cheesy quavers that's like eating cheese flavored air and then to get me protein up egg and spinach personal favorites so i'm gonna have a quick munch on here time wise we're doing all right i think um eta about three o'clock which is what i wanted it to be so yeah gonna get some food and then crack on <sighs> fully sustained oh i needed that i did the chichester 10k yesterday and my body was hungry but when you are on a dual carriageway or motorway in this car and you stick the cruise on it just it's a really nice place to be. These seats don't give a huge amount of support laterally, but they're not not—they're not uncomfortable. Um, there's great visibility out of the car, and it's just a nice place to do miles. I, I had a feeling, I've done a few long journeys when I was with Future Terrain, but those cars were kind of set up for off-road and stuff, and I, I thought that might have compromised them a little bit. This one, really not the case at all. It's a nice, nice place to cruise. In terms of, <coughs> infotainment system I've mentioned before it's it's relatively basic I'm just listening to the radio sat nav seems to be doing a good job the native one comparing it with Waze is quite interesting at the moment we've still got about 125 miles to go 
to reach a destination and there's only a couple of minutes difference in the ETA between Waze and the native sat -nav. And then the main Instagram cluster, really simple, there's not a great deal of information on it to be honest. It's nice, back to basics motoring. It's actually quite nice because pretty much everything you need, you've got buttons for. You don't really need to go into the sat nav because there aren't that many functions in there. So this is how cars used to be, right? You just go, oh, I know, I'll, I'll turn the temperature up on my air conditioning. I know I've got buttons to do that. I don't need to go into a touch screen. And I like that a great deal. Very cross with myself. I've done this journey up north so many times. But I've got quite a lot on my mind clearly because I went straight past the exit off of the 42 onto the M6, M6 toll. <laughs> and I carried on the M42 and then when I had to come up the M5 and then on the M6 and go through the M6 at Birmingham rather than go around the toll. So I've hit traffic. But the reason I wanted to just have a bit of a chat, I think it's quite interesting. I've got two sat navs working and Waze for me is one of the best sat nav systems for keeping up with traffic and alerting you of when there's holdups on the routes and those types of things. And I have to say that the Dacia sat nav is almost exactly the same. It's saying ETA at the moment 1520 on 1520 on the Waze, 1521 on Dacia, both 74 miles. Um, so it's it's doing a good job, really doing a good job. And uh, it's relatively easy to follow as well. So actually native sat nav on this Dacia Duster, considering it's, you know, arguably five years old technology from Renault, it's doing a good job. All I need now is for this traffic to do one because my ETA originally was it was three o'clock and I've lost a whole bunch of time. I did stop for coffee though. That was a good 10 minutes. Okay, the car's done a very Renault thing. <laughs> so um, the fuel situation, I, I knew I could probably get up to my destination without having to put any more fuel in the car, but I knew I would probably get to the destination with maybe 20 or 30 miles so definitely pushing the range and here I am I now have range anxiety in a petrol car because the fuel light came on with 80 miles of range to go um, and when it gets to about 50 miles and I've had this in Renault's before and I used to own a Renault used to do this all the time uh, the range goes from like counting down 50 miles and then it just goes it just has three dots and it doesn't actually tell you how many miles of range there's got left. <laughs> so you have to guess. Now, I've still got just under a quarter of a, a tank showing. Um, well, no, actually, sorry, an eighth of a tank showing. <laughs> Oops. Um, and I've got 36 miles to my destination. So I'm pretty sure the last time I was checking, I had a 20 mile positive delta. Um, but I think the thing is, I need to get to my destination because I need to get to my hotel, get changed and then go and meet someone. And I've only got about 40 minutes of time to get all that done. So the last thing I want to be doing is stopping for 10 minutes to fill up with fuel. I want to do that in the morning just before I drive home. So yes, I'm now going to play Fuel Bingo. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if I make it. I've only got, as I said, I've got 35 miles or so left to go. Um, uh, and so far, uh, the miles per gallon, I'm averaging 42.1 miles per gallon. And I know you could get better than that because two things. One, there's an eco mode in this car, which I've now gone into because I'm trying to save as much fuel as possible. But also, um, I've sat on the motorway at 70 miles an hour with a cruise control on. And if you wanted to get that MPG higher, then you might not do that. You might sit there at 60, 65, something like that. I have been driving to get somewhere on time, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can get to the destination and still have fuel. <laughs> Don't want to run out. Okay, I'm less than 10 miles from my destination and the light is fading fast. So let me summarize my thoughts on this Dacia Duster. Let's do positives first. Positives are, if on a long journey, it's very comfortable. I've been pretty much in this car about four and a half hours um, I don't have a numb bum, my back's not sore, 
these seats clearly do a good job. It's a nice place to do a long journey. I've got cruise control if I want it. The really nice thing about this car is everything is real buttons. Once you've set the destination in the native sat-nav, everything else is buttons. Climate control, stereo has a little um, selector just to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, so that's all done with buttons. Um, cruise control's all on the steering wheel. So yeah, it's, it's an unusual thing. It doesn't have lane departure assistance, which is nice for a new car. It also doesn't have the speed bong when you go over the speed limit that you have to t turn off in the infotainment system. So these are all big positives. Um, negatives, well, to be honest, there aren't that many negatives as long as you put into the context the price of the car. For sure, the material choice on the inside of the car is on the lower end of budget, but that's how they bring the car to market for 17 to 22,000 pounds. So that's, that's kind of to be expected, but it's not horrible. Everything you touch is okay. The steering wheel has a nice kind of leather feel to it. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's nice. It's just the kind of, you know, scratchy plastics, but I'll forgive them for that. Mega practical, big boot, reasonable space in the back. I think it looks quite quirky as well. I quite like the looks of Adapter Duster. I quite like the spec of this one with this with this paintwork. It's very cool. So yeah, all in all, for the money, it's an amazing bit of kit. And as I said, off-road, certainly kind of medium to, to, to halfway towards mega technical. These are exceptional off-road. They're certainly within the envelope of what 95% of people would ever need to go off-road. Driving around a farm, doing some green laning, you're not gonna get into trouble in a Dacia Duster, that's for sure. They're brilliant, brilliant things. I would love to know what you think. Um, give me some suggestions for budget cars to come to the channel. What I'm gonna try and do is go to each manufacturer and say, send me the cheapest car in your range. I want to review it. Um, but yes, big thanks to the guys at Dacia for reaching out and prompting me to have this one. I'm really pleased I've had it. Now, I am gonna get to my destination. My average MPG, by the way, I am currently running at 42.8 miles to the gallon, and I haven't driven like a monk by any means. So I'm sure there's some, some wiggle room in that to get that a little bit higher. But anyway, I'm gonna concentrate and uh, work on my way. What have I got now? Only six miles to go. But if you enjoyed that, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come, and I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe. I made it, <laughs> and I reckon, hold on a minute, what have we got here? We've got, there's my, uh, so I've done a total of 357 miles. Uh, range was showing like that for basically the last 20 minutes, and my average MPG, 43, come on. And I, I, got enough, I should have enough fuel to get to a station tomorrow. But now, time to go meet the guys from Michelin.